hierarchy. So these are a class of classical algorithms that are believed to be resistant to quantum attacks. And we'll just highlight a few of these. Um, um, so these are lattice-based problems, or many of these are lattice-based problems. Um, and some of the ones that you'll see when reading about this are uh, called the shortest vector problem, the closest vector problem, learning with errors. Um, we'll show examples of these in just a moment. And, and with lattice-based problems, uh, the public key is derived from the definition of the lattice. Uh, the private key is related to the problem solution. So given the lattice, it's hard to find the solution. Um, and so this is analogous to um, you know, this one-way aspect of, of cryptographic systems that we've seen before. So what is the shortest vector problem? So let's assume that we have some lattice, which is like a, a periodic structure um, that is created by the spanning of some basis vectors, B1 and B2. Uh, these are um, generally not orthogonal vectors. So the spanning of these vectors creates a lattice. And the question is, what is the shortest vector in this lattice? Um, this seems like a simple problem, but given that these, these vectors are not orthogonal, this becomes a hard problem to compute. A related problem is called the closest vector problem. In this case, we have a lattice defined by uh, these basis vectors, uh, and we have a query vector that's not on the lattice, and we're saying, what is the vector in the lattice that's closest to our query vector, Q? And there's another algorithm that you see a lot in the literature or in, in you know, PQC, which is called learning with errors. Um, so the first equation is, is showing an instance of a learning with error problem, learning with errors problem. So we're given a matrix A, a vector B, a, mod, a modulus Q. And the question is, how do we find the solution vector S, given that an error vector or a noise vector has been added? Um, so this is almost like a linear system of equations that, that's where we've had noise added, but you know, um, modulo Q. So this is a hard problem to solve. Um, but this problem is actually related to these other lattice problems that we've just seen. Um, and uh, this material is taken from a cybersecurity blog that really highlights this pretty well. Um, they show here that if you can, you can actually define a lattice problem using these same parameters, uh, the, the matrix A, the vector B, modulo Q here, we can define a lattice. You can show that the solution to the uh, learning with errors problem, you know, um, the solution S along with the error vector E, uh, augmented a little bit here with, with the value one, this is a solution um, to that, um, uh, so this this uh, learning with error solution is actually the shortest vector um, uh, solution to the lattice problem. So uh, the takeaway is that the learning with errors and the lattice space problems are related to each other. They're, I guess you could think of them as different ways to pose the same problem. So um, you know th these types of problems have shown uh, have shown a lot of interest. Uh, and they are, um, uh, most of the um, NIST finalists are lattice-based uh, uh, algorithms. So NIST in 2016 issued a challenge um, to discover, um, you know, some post-quantum candidate, post-quantum cryptography candidate algorithms. And, you know, we had many candidate algorithms over several years. These have, uh, now today we're, we've left with four finalists. Um, three of these are lattice-based. Uh, either signature schemes or key encapsulation methods. Uh, there's there's one that is not. Um, the Sphinx algorithm is based on hash trees with uh, collision resistant hash functions, but you can see the fact that three of the four are based on lattice-based lattice cryptography show how important this class of problems are.